Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tell Me About Podcast, where each week, two nerdy friends deep dive random topics. I'm Laura. And I'm Tom. So, Laura, we've had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun these first eight episodes. We have. And we've tackled some very interesting subjects. Mm -hmm. But we can't escape one of the most pressing debates of our time. What's that? Well, you know, we're here to answer the tough questions, and we are here to give our opinions on some of the biggest philosophical questions that have been pondered by humankind over the years. The chicken versus the egg, nature versus nurture, science versus religion, even though science is a liar sometimes. I should say that we do not believe that. That's an always sunny in Philadelphia reference. Please do not say us. We love science. We love science. We love science, but it is time to tackle the greatest debate of our time. I think I know where you're going. That's right. We are diving into the gas station discourse and tackling Wawa versus Sheets. If you grew up in a certain portion of the United States like Laura and I did and live in a certain portion of the United States like Laura and I do, you know that there are people in this region that are fanatically devoted to their gas station food. This is very much an American thing. Very, very much an American thing. I don't see Canadians clamoring for food from the SO station. Basically, this is, I think, a very, very fancy 7-Eleven. I mean, what they lack in big gulps, they make up for in fanatical devotion. Mm-hmm. And we're going to dive into that today. We're going to take really go a little bit into the history of both of the companies but really we're going to dive more into what we think is better wawa or sheets this is where your high school debate classes just really come to shine if you were in high school debate which i wasn't so this could go either way so we'll start with wawa wawa you're gonna get sick of me hearing that word by the time this is over wawa was actually founded in 1902 it was started as a dairy farm in the town of wawa pennsylvania which is in Delaware County. Wawa is the uh, indigenous or Native American term for, uh, word for Canada goose. And if you've ever seen the Wawa logo, that's why the logo has a goose on it. Well, can I just say, it took me forever to figure out that that's what the logo was, first of all, and now it all makes sense. So thank you for that. And what I will tell you too, is there's actually a town in Ontario called Wawa. And I think somewhat, if we ha- our Canadian listeners need to tell us, if the people of Wawa, Ontario, know about Wawa convenience stores. Yes, I'd love to know that. So it started as a uh, dairy farm uh, doing milk delivery because milk delivery and the milkman were a thing in the 1900s. The family opens up a convenience store in 1964 in Folsom, Pennsylvania. And from there, it grows. They become well known for their sandwiches. I refuse to say hoagies i it I, I don't know what a hoagie is i refuse to say it i will call them sandwiches till the day i die i will die on that hill laura i will die on that hill i believe you as word becomes popular about uh wawa they start expanding uh it's in the 70s and the 80s that they become extremely well known for their sandwiches they also start adding gas stations now wawa's in the Six as 60s, 70s, and 80s had a kind of distinct look. They had wood paneling on the inside. They were small. They were cozy. It felt like the original Wawa store, store in Folsom. That changes as the brand grows and becomes well-known uh, in the Philadelphia area. As it expands in the South Jersey, uh, it becomes a, the more kind of a uh, cookie cutter, modernized white building structure that you see today. It also changed its logo. The logo for a long time was the sun setting with the uh, silhouette of a of a Canada goose. Um, I remember the sunset. Yeah, I remember yes, the sunset very distinctly. We all remember the sunset. They morphed into what they have become today. And they've gone from one store in Folsom to stores all over the Philadelphia area, Lehigh Valley, 
uh, into Central and South Jersey, and they've even expanded into Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and all the way down into Florida. At around the same time, in the other, on the other side of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we have Sheets. Sheets was also uh, originally a dairy farm, but in 1952, Bob Sheets, yes, it's the guy's name was Sheets with a Z. I should add that too. If you're not from Pennsylvania, Sheets is spelled S-H-E-E-T-Z because the Z is edgy. He buys the store from his father in Altoona, Pennsylvania. He opens a couple more in Altoona, and from there, Sheets grows. It kind of takes the same trajectory as Wawa does just on the western side of the state. For geographical context, Philadelphia is the southeastern corner of Pennsylvania. Altoona is in central Pennsylvania, more west, heading towards uh, Pittsburgh. As both these stores kind of follow the same trajectory in the 60s and the 70s, Sheets expands rapidly. They add gas. They add uh, sandwiches. They add a deep fryer, which is basically the, the difference between Sheets and Wawa. Otherwise, they're pretty much the exact same store in a lot of different ways. Um, I, will, I have an argument about that, but we'll get there. Okay. Okay. They expand just like Wawa expands eastwards and south. Sheets expands westward and south. They go into West Virginia. They go into Ohio. Uh, They expand in and around the Pittsburgh area. Although, oddly enough, not really in Pittsburgh proper. Mm -hmm. They stay in the outskirts, but they grow exponentially. That's that's a good point. I've been to Pittsburgh a couple times, and I don't remember seeing sheets in the city. So it's, yeah, that's a it's good really point. not like once you get outside the city, they're all over the place, but they're not in the city. It's it's kind of an odd thing. So it sounds like sheets went more Midwest, and Wawa just kind of hugged the East Coast. Although I think aren't they looking to establish stores in California? Or am I not remembering? Well, we're, right? we're going to get to that in a second. Okay, we're going to get to that in a little bit. During this time, as it would seem fitting, Sheets and Wawa are actually basically helping each other out because both families are in the same business. In fact, it was Ryan Sheets, who was the director of brand strategy for Sheets, told Thrillis in 2017, our family, quote, our family started out as really good friends. My uncle Steve served on the board of directors at Wawa and Rich Wood of Wawa served on our board of directors. That's Early crazy. In- Think about that happening in 2023. It would not happen in 2023. It no would way. not happen. There would be basically they'd be sabotaging each other. Early on, I think they really helped each other out a lot. The similar similarities are an accidental. We shared a lot of our good ideas with each other. We are definitely from the same mold. It's because of this that this kind of mythology starts to take hold and this urban legend begins to take shape that there's, and pardon the gender term, a gentleman's agreement between the Sheets family and the Wawa family. That Wawa will take the eastern side of the state and Sheets will take the western side of the state. And neither the twain shall interconnect with each other. Now. Looking into this, no one, there's basically no evidence that there was actually ever a agreement. Quite frankly, an agreement would seem kind of against both of their Mm self-interest. And in fact, it was the Harrisburg Patriot News that basically just put out an an op-ed in 2018 saying there's no gentlemanly agreement. It's just that each one trying to move into the other's territory would not go over well. They wouldn't get any traction. And that's just a, it's a, it's a marker of how intertwined for better or worse, both of these stores are in their communities and their region of Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. especially as they've grown. What has kind of happened as a result is a very fierce, almost tribal loyalist loyalism has occurred between people who are loyal to Wawa and people who are loyal to Sheets. Did it start that 
the owners of each started to become rivals of each other or was it the the customers that started the rivalry it was really it, it, it was kind of neither it was the fact that it was philadelphia versus pittsburgh we mentioned i mentioned before about philadelphia being on the southeast corner of the state basically wawas populate that area almost exclusively they blot out pretty much everything else I swear you can't go a mile without seeing a Wawa. And these are almost like civic centers. There are people, there, a lot of them are open 24 hours and there are people hanging out them every, all hours of the day and night. There are wedding parties who have taken their wedding pictures in front of Wawa. Uh, there are people who have catered their weddings with Wawa. That's dedication. In a lot of places and you know, I have a job that kind of takes me all over the Northeast. I've been to a lot of places where that are in quote unquote sheets country. I've had people tell me that a lot of times, especially in rural areas, when they need to use the internet, they go to sheets because it's the only place in town that has reliable Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. A little bit less so in, in Philadelphia because of how big Philadelphia is. But especially in uh, rural c central and western Pennsylvania, these are sheets is almost a big part of civic life out there, mm -hmm. especially in a lot of these smaller towns. And I, well, I think that's important to note that the middle of of Pennsylvania is very rural. They're not. I wouldn't even say really suburban that much. It's, just, it's, it's, it's very rural. It's very rural. If you've ever driven through. The state of Pennsylvania, it is very rural. There are some very rural areas. And so it's right around like Reading, Morgantown, Huntington, Pennsylvania, that are really, that's kind of become the dividing line mm -hmm. where there are some sheets in Reading. There are a couple in Allentown, but really the sheets territorial line begins and ends there. And the Wawa kind of bubble starts and ends there. That's mm -hmm. kind of the dividing line. And then once you get into places like Harrisburg, and then especially like wrapping around that bubble in places like Wilkesbury and Scranton and the Poconos, it's mostly sheets. Although there are a couple of Wawas up there as well. Because so many people in these areas have grown up with these places, they become very territorial of them. Mm-hmm. There are rap songs talking about Wawa. Now, when you go into one of these stores, you'll notice that most Wawas and most sheets are pretty similar in the way they're set up. In most places, there's uh, a lot of, there are gas pumps. You know, they both introduced gas like around the 70s or the 80s as they were gaining popularity. Uh, they both have a distinct made-to-order food counter. Uh, Wawa traditionally was more cold sandwiches. And also the Gobbler. If you know about the Gobbler, you know about the Gobbler. Uh, sheets had tended to have more hot food. Things like chicken tenders, mozzarella sticks. They have a deep fryer. They had French fries. French fries. You could put fries on your sandwich. That's a Pittsburgh thing. Don't I, I know, I can't explain it either, but that's a Pittsburgh thing. Uh, really about the only difference is, is that sheets, most, a lot of sheets now have indoor dining areas mm -hmm. well, where a lot of Wawa's do not. Usually most times when you go to Wawa, you sit outside on the hood of your car and eat your Wawa. Or inside your car. Or inside your car, either or. I've had, I've had many meals sitting in my car eating, <laughs> eating at Wawa. I have had many, almost many a car accidents trying to avoid people parking at lunch at a Wawa. But mostly these stores are the same to an extent where it really comes down and where people get so heated about this is that there is a very big rivalry between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Each city thinks that they are a... Basically, they are the jewel of the country, and it is forces outside that have basically conspired to keep them down for generations and generations. 
while the other is is this stuck up elitist for <laughs> elitist worst version of themselves. These are the arguments on both sides. There was a article in Mail Magazine in 2020, and I want to quote the author, who was a Philly who was a Philly native living in Pittsburgh, who writes this: "As is typical of ours versus theirs types of stores, behaviors, opinions, and dialects, the debate is often hostile. This one in particular is exacerbated slightly by the geographical inevitability of civic rivalry between two cities." including those that falsely claimed them, shots fired, with two massive populations, multiple professional sports franchises, and the shared delusion that they're uniquely put upon by life, life's hardships, perpetually overlooked or derided, and anxious to prove ellipses something. I agree with all that, and it is it is a very hostile rivalry, yes. Philadelphia will always be jealous of Pittsburgh because of how good it is at sports, and Pittsburgh will always be jealous of Philadelphia because it could never be as cool as Philly. That's pretty much it, <laughs> in a nutshell. That's when you have situations like a uh, Flyers fan who, when the Flyers played an outdoor game in Pittsburgh – not that long ago, about five, six years ago, who brought a sign to the game saying Wawa is better than Sheets, basically got death threats. Yeah, that uh, doesn't surprise me. Um, or got cursed out. He reported that at least one person uh, called him a homophobic slur. You can no. probably guess which one that is. Based solely on the fact that he brought a sign saying Wawa is better than Sheets. It's a bit of an overreaction. It, Yeah, yeah, it is. Sports are fun, but it's in this kind of messy, chaotic maelstrom that we get people who decide that they are Team Sheets or Team Wawa, or I should say Team Sheets and the Wawa flock, I guess. It's been now in the later, in the last few years that the quote unquote gentlemanly agreement has been, shall we say, challenged in recent years. Uh, Sheets has moved into Virginia, in, into Maryland, into North Carolina. Wawa has moved, started to move into Harrisburg. Uh, they've announced that they're going to put stores in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. I guess the stores in Cincinnati will have chili on on, will have chili on top of spaghetti. I guess because that's a Cincinnati thing. But Wawa has then taken it a step further. So. For those of you who are familiar with Pennsylvania, the me the melting point for the entire state is State College. It's where Penn State University is. It's right almost right smack in the middle of the state in uh, Center County. The school was basically put there by design so that it wouldn't be closer to Pittsburgh or closer to Philadelphia. It would be equidistant from both of them, equidistant from everywhere. And it'd be kind of, it would be somewhat of a meeting point for everyone from the state. Penn State really does bring both sides of the state together. That's absolutely true. And it, again, it, they literally put it, and I can tell you this as an alum, they literally, literally put it right smack in the middle of the state. It's about 160 miles east of Pittsburgh. It's about a hundred. 85 miles northwest of Philadelphia, right smack in the middle of the state. For a long time, State College was Sheets territory. They had stores in on the outskirts of town for a while. The last few years, few, few years, they had a store in downtown State College, which you would think would do phenomenal, but actually didn't. They actually closed the store a couple of months ago. Really? There are a lot of other stores that do what Sheets does in downtown State College and do it a lot cheaper than what Sheets does. But now Wawa has fired the ultimate gambit. They have announced that they are putting a store in State College. The first Wawa store in State College and in Center County. This is an interesting gambit. It's also interesting because there's been an influx in the last few months of Philly businesses going into State College, which there really haven't been before. State College, a lot of the businesses that were in the, the businesses, a lot of the chains that were in State College 
uh, that were regional tended to be Pittsburgh chains. There's going to be a Wawa up there now. There was going to be, I believe, I forget if it was Pat or Geno's, was going to open. <laughs> Your face said it all. The plans actually fell through, but it was going to open. And this was going to be a direct competitor to the famous Pittsburgh Cromanty Brothers, which is in State College, which also doubles as a nightclub. Because sometimes you want to have fries on your sandwich and then just start raving. But this is now an interesting test to see whether or not this quote-unquote gentlemanly agreement holds up. What do you think is going to happen? Well, we'll just have to see. I think there's more than enough business there for everybody. Mm -hmm. Very diplomatic. Especially in State College, there is a very pretty even mix of people from the Philadelphia or the eastern side, the Wawa side of the state and the Sheets side of the state. There is definitely, there's enough traffic there where they can both coexist. But this is going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. I Now, I have no idea where the Wawa is going to go. To be honest, I, I don't know if they've announced where it's going to go. If we have any... If we have any Penn State alums or any State College people listening, uh, please leave a message on our socials telling us where the Wawa is going to go because then I think I'll, I can tell you right now, I'll have a better idea of how it, well it's going to do based on where it is. Mm -hmm. With that, we thought it would be fun for Laura and I to go back and forth and debate whether we like Wawa better or Sheets better. I mean, uh, I, I already have my mind made up for a lot of reasons. We can get into it. Well, let's let's get into it. This is this, we're embracing debate here. Let's get into it. First, I want to say I think that Wawa is definitely more culty than Sheets is. You you definitely have more of a cult following that prefer Wawa to Sheets, in my opinion, from what I see. Would you agree with that? I would, but that's also. Philly is kind of a cult following type of place. True. And so it's very, it's a very, if you know, you know, type of city. Wawa is very much part of that culture. Let's put it this way. They don't make shirts with the Sheets logo that say John on it. It's, that's a very Philly thing. To my point. Yes. You know, people don't take Sheets hoagies into Philly's games. Mm-hmm. Sheets doesn't have a hoagie fest. They do not, not. They do not have a hoagie fest. Wawa has a hoagie fest. So I think, too, they're a lot better at promotion, <laughs> at least in my opinion, with that type of stuff, because that's a huge thing. And you mentioned the gobbler. That's a huge thing every year. And people wait for it and crave it. Have you ever had a gobbler? I have not, but it doesn't appeal to me. I just so that listeners, I'm a very picky eater, so it's that's another thing. So no. So I'm going to so basically for those of you who don't know what a Wawa gobbler is, and you can get this in either a sandwich or a bowl. It is basically turkey, and not like cult like deli meat turkey, but like carved Thanksgiving turkey mm -hmm. with stuffing and cranberry sauce on a hoagie roll. People love it. It's cold. It, cold. It's not my thing, but people go gaga for it. They really do. They'll talk about it for weeks before it comes out. It is just like how there are people that just go gaga for Halloween. People go just absolutely up the wall for the gobbler. Mm -hmm. Now, Sheets does not have a gobbler. They do put fries on their on their chicken tender subs if you want. And they do have mozzarella sticks and onion rings. Wawa now has pizza. And they have more hot foods. They started burgers and chicken sandwiches and french fries. And so they, they've elevated their hot food game a bit. Yeah. But I don't know how good it is. I've had the burger and fries. That It wasn't bad, honestly. Okay. Well, that so that's interesting because I've had people tell me it was really disappointing. Okay. Well... But, I mean, I, I like burgers and fries, so that it doesn't take much to impress me. And I, no. I, for me, being such a picky eater, I like things very customizable. And the fact that you can customize it yourself, making those options, and nine times out of ten, it won't get messed up. Then, yeah, that's that's a big selling point for me too. I also don't know if you're getting a burger from Wawa. What exactly it is you're expecting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not going to be a Five Guys burger for sure. 
It's not, or like a Shake Shack, mm -hmm. which is really good. See, but that, like I said, it, it kind of goes back to my point of Wawa seems to be much better at, at these gimmicky promotions than Sheets is. Like, you don't see any of that from Sheets at all. You don't see, you know, I, you know, I, I haven't spent a ton of time out there. You don't see Sheets advertise on TV. No. Wawa, you see all the time. Mm-hmm. Wawa did a hype video when the Eagles were in the Super Bowl last year. And I think they do have sponsorships with the sport with the Philly sports teams. They do. In fact, uh, as we record this in October, as the Phillies are back in the playoffs, they have re brought they have brought back Schwarbfest. They have. Wawa also has Hokie Day, where they will go outside Independence Hall in Old City, which is where all the historical revolutionary buildings and artifacts are where the Liberty Bell is. And they will just go there with mat with a massive hoagie that they'll just cut up to, into hundreds of slices and just give them away for free mm -hmm. for free sandwiches on Fourth of July. And again, you know, Sheets doesn't do that. No, but then again, when you have a deep fryer, Sheets maybe doesn't have to do that. From my experience, and I, I am obviously very biased in this argument because it's very, Wawa is very nostalgic for me. I used to go there as a kid and, you know, get candy. And I remember being like 14, 15, 16 years old and going up to the, the coffee machines and, you know, mixing the cappuccinos together. And oh, Wawa always had... Not so much anymore, but like back in the 80s, 90s, Wawa had this certain smell to it. It wasn't a bad smell. It was just the Wawa smell. Do you know what I mean? It just had this certain smell to it that when you walked in, you know, that's where you are, you know? So I think it, it was such a big part of my childhood. And like I said, that you can't go anywhere around the Delaware Valley region without, you know, going a mile without hitting a Wawa. So it's so prominent in the area. And I think just because it's so much a part of my life, I'm there at least once a week anyway, you know, I don't know, for me, I'm definitely biased. And I think comparison to the actual stores, in my opinion, I think that Wawa, depending on the Wawa you go to, stores tend to be cleaner and a little more organized. I, I feel like Sheets feels more dirty and greasy and I, I don't know that's that's just in the sheets that I've been in you know which haven't been many I I always get this like dirty greasy you know kind of weird vibe to it I don't know there's there's a lot of a lot of great great things about Wawa so first of all you Wawa elitist <laughs> I am I am a Wawa elitist <laughs> I'm gonna preface all of this by saying this I grew up in New York I had never, we didn't have Sheets or Wawa. I had never even heard of them until I moved to this part of the country. When I moved here and I heard, or when I started going to Penn State and I heard doormates, friends talk about Sheets and Wawa, I had to stop myself. You're talking about a gas station. It's more than a gas station for both of them. They're more. But than when I first station. moved here, all I thought about was it's a gas station. Yeah, but like you <laughs> learned real quick. Despite the fact that I had no idea what it was, and despite the fact that I spent four years at Penn State, I actually had never eaten at Sheets before until a couple of years ago, where my job started taking me all over, all over the northeastern United States, literally all over the northeast. After sampling a lot of their food at both places, I've come to this conclusion, and this may be a cop-out, but fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. Sheets has the better hot food. Wawa has the better cold food. Shots fired, my friend. That is shots fired with that statement. First of all, Sheets has chicken tender subs and mozzarella sticks. And they're beautifully done. Wawa now has chicken tenders, and I don't know if they have mozzarella sticks. They might. I don't know. But can you get them with Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce? Okay, probably not. So, see, there you go. So, okay, so the one thing that Sheets is better at, again, Wawa is just, it's just a step above it. It, it just really is. It, it just, it outnumbers them in stores. It outnumbers them in products and things that they sell. I, I don't know. They're just, they're just better. 
I didn't say while I didn't say it wasn't better. I say they're both equal and they're both good. That's you're being too diplomatic for this argument. It's not being diplomatic, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. If we could combine them, and so you had Wawa's cold sandwiches, deli sandwiches, and sheets as hot food, well, then you'd have something really good. But I think with the introduction of the hot foods at Wawa, yeah, they, they can improve a little bit. I will fully admit that. Did but you I, see the did you see the barbecue brisket? That was not brisket, it was a cry for help. I mean, I don't like brisket, so I did not see that and I wouldn't eat it, but I don't know. I mean, you're not gonna like everything. And yes, again, this it's it's testing the market, what is doing well, what is selling, what they need to improve on. I feel like they they're a big enough company to be able to take that customer feedback and improve on that. And I and a couple other things about Wawa I wanted to mention. So I did, There, were, I had a friend of a friend years ago that uh, I think was in management at Wawa and really talked about how they have, a, they have an excellent training program, um, they have an excellent customer service program, and they really try to move up their own employees. And they're also pretty well paid comparison to other convenience stores. And I, ju I just think on that level, I, I don't see Sheets doing that. I don't see Sheets having such a I guess, employee incentive, employee growth program. And I don't know that for sure, but I think Wawa really kind of focuses on that and and good for them. Absolutely. You want to reward your good employees. This sponsored content was not sponsored by the Wawa company. You want to pick up that name you just dropped on the floor? I'm just a fan. I am just a fan. And two, just another throwback for those of you that have been in Wawa. And remember, this was probably early 2000s. It, it went on for years. I don't know when they finally stopped doing it, but you used to be able to mix your own milkshake. You used to go to this like freezer part and you would get this like frozen pre-mixed uh, milkshake. Essentially you go and pay for it. And then you put it in this machine and you could, you could, you could, you could customize the thickness of what you want. If you wanted a really thin milkshake, or if you wanted a really thick milkshake, you want a big one, little one, you could really customize it, you know, as you wanted. And they have a ton of good flavors. And honestly, for like kids and, you know, even teenagers, like it was a really cool thing. And they were really good. Like I said, I don't know when they got rid of it, but I always thought that that was a neat thing. That does sound good. It was very good. And, and as a side, we're joking around. I, you know, good for good for raising the wages. Good for raising the wages. Absolutely. The, on this podcast, we love and support workers. And I think too, and I, again, have a lot more experience with Wawa. And for most employees that I've, I've come into contact with at Wawa, they're lovely people. They do train them very well. And to deal with some of these asshole customers, <laughs> we've all seen them that come in and, and just do it with a smile and, you know, keep their shit together. You know, I, I really have to, you know, I don't know how they do it. I couldn't do it with being as busy as they are, especially in the mornings, people going in and getting their coffee and it's just, it's not. So I couldn't do it. So, you know. Other stores across the country have kind of altered themselves to be more like Wawa and Sheets. Mm -hmm. And you start to see them kind of encroach across the country. So where we live, we've started to get Royal Farms, mm -hmm. which is based in Maryland. And they are like Wawa and Sheets, only they are known for fried chicken. And to me, and we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, to me, Royal Farms seems to be more like Sheets, in my opinion. I think it's smaller. It doesn't have as much selection. Um, they pretty much just do hot foods, if I'm if I'm remembering that correctly. I haven't been in there many times. Um, but to me, at least the aesthetics of, of inside of the store reminds me a lot of Sheets and not Wawa. I'll have to take your word for it. I've actually never been inside a Royal Farms. I mean, and there's it's nothing special. Well, we just lost Eddie Merlin <laughs> listenership with that we ever had. But you've also had stores across the country really start to embrace this this more diverse food selection from places like 7-Eleven to Quick Trip to all over. And then you get to Texas and then there's Bucky's. This thing, I don't know if you've ever seen this thing. If you're from Texas, you 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 have probably at some point either driven past or stopped at a Bucky's off the interstate. This isn't a truck stop or a convenience store. This thing is a friggin' compound. 
I say this with all the respect and love in the world. Look at this fucking thing. It it, it, it is. They have two. They they have a wall of fount of fountain drinks. It looks like the the archers on the turrets of a castle. You could get lost in it. It's got a butcher station. It's has it sells lawn chairs. This thing is tremendous. Like, oh my god, this thing is huge. I I stopped in it once. You should have seen the look of awe and utter utter befuddlement as as to what I just as to what I witnessed. It actually reminds me a bit of Wawa, but bigger. It is like a compound. Wow! Feast your eyes on this behemoth. You could either feel that this is Texas's gift to the world or a monument to opulence. I say the former. I say everything's bigger in Texas. Wow. This is massive. That's crazy. It, like I said, even, I don't know, even the, the aesthetic of the outside of the store reminds me of Wawa a bit. Apparently they're, they uh, have a go-to food of beaver nuggets. Is it real beaver? It is not beaver. No. Okay. Thank God. It is caramel corn. Okay, much better than beaver. It's caramel puff corn. Well, They're just called good. beaver nuggets. But if anyone lives in Texas and wants to send us some beaver nuggets, we will not say no to it. Basically, there's really no right answer to any of this. No, they, there is a right answer, and the right answer is Wawa. That is the right answer. I hate to disagree with you, but you're wrong. The answer is they're both good in their own special way. I would love to see the the revenue for each of these companies i bet it it's like seven wawa is seven times as much as sheets the, Easy. The, the revenue for both of them is probably through the fucking roof that's what the revenue is oh i'm sure but i think wawa certainly outdoes them well if you're talking about wawa also probably has a bigger population area to pull from okay that's fair i'll give you that like we said, Sheets is not in the city of Pittsburgh. Wawa's in the city of Philadelphia. So that that makes me wonder why isn't it in the city of Pittsburgh? If it was so popular and so beloved, why isn't it in the city of Pittsburgh? Wawa's in Philadelphia. Because Wawa's an urban thing. Sheets is more of a rural thing. There are plenty of Wawa's in suburban Philadelphia. So I'm just rem- I'm just reminding myself that we're doing this for gas station food discourse. I again it's it's to me I don't see it as as gas station food because that that just has a weird connotation to it like honest it is cuz you can get gas and you can get food so I can see where you make that connection but it's not it's not what your mind thinks of when you think of gas station food I think of the like the quickie mart almost where it's like hot dogs that have been sitting there for 3 days and you know stuff like that this is that's not quite what it is well, I don't think anyone's gone in with an oversized foam cowboy hat trying to get the quick trying to get a Wawa or Sheets on spoiled food violations. I mean, you never know. Those health inspectors, they're slick. So I think the other thing about Wawa is it's it's really the ultimate convenience store. Snacks, the hot foods, the cold foods, you know, they have awesome drinks and and coffee and shakes and a lot of people stop there and get you know their cigarettes or you know their vape pods or chewing tobacco it's it's very big on tobacco products it's such an easy stop to make you know because if you just need a handful of things just you know go in and grab it and i think you know that's the point obviously and the other thing too with wawa is that there's a nostalgia you mentioned the nostalgia part to it and for a lot of people who grow up in philadelphia what are their their memories are not just of growing up in Philly, but their memories are going down the Jersey Shore. Whether that was to places like Atlantic City or Wildwood or Sea Isle or Cape May. And Wawa very smartly expanded to all these places too. They did. When people would go and hang out at Wawa, they wouldn't just do it in Philly. They'd do it going in down the Jersey Shore. And so for a lot of people, I'm sure they have memories of eating a hoagie on the boardwalk of, of Wildwater or on the beach. And it brings back memories for trips with their family, trips with their parents, trips mm-hmm. with their friends, you know, beach houses, you know, mm-hmm. where, where maybe that was the only thing you could afford to, to buy was to, was to splurge, you know, once a week to go to Wawa. Mm-hmm. So there's that part of it too that sheets really can't replicate. 
And that's, that was the culty piece that I was talking about it, that you, it is something more special for people than I think sheets. I think sheets, I mean, it is a convenience store, but I, there's not that nostalgia. There's not that, I guess, special feelings about it as there is Wawa. And I know for me, myself, like I said, just growing up with it and, you know, going up and down the East coast on, you know, trips and, you know, family vacations and stuff. It's almost like you see one and it's, it's almost like comfort. Cause it's like, you know what to expect, you know, what's going to be there, you know, hell, let me go run in and grab this or, you know, have to use the bathrooms and the bathrooms are usually a lot better than gas station bathrooms uh, in general. So it's like you, it's almost like a, a comfort thing. Going down the shore is a very Philadelphia thing. Down the shore. It, it's to, it's a New York thing to an extent, uh, but it's a very Philadelphia thing. And it's mm-hmm. a very Jersey thing. And Wawa kind of taps into that in a way that Sheets kind of can't because there's not that mythology, mythology attached to it. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do very much associate sheets with more like farm country and, and, and rural landscapes and stuff like that. So it definitely reflects the area, the geographic area that it's in. Absolutely. So when you were in New York though, did you, did you ever hear of Wawa or sheets or that wasn't even on your radar? Like, did you that was not even on, that was not even on the radar. Okay. Did you have like 7-Eleven or? We had 7-Eleven, but 7-Eleven people also really weren't getting like, food at gas stations Mm -hmm. because you know the 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 food they had was gross well it was like the hot dogs turning on the Mm -hmm. on on the on the rotating tray thing exactly Um, And and i think that's what sheets and wawa has done as i kind of mentioned they've separated the gas station part and the foods part so it's it doesn't feel like you're getting food from a gas station because it, it's not essentially it's a gas station separate and a convenience store that's separate. You know, it's, I think they did a bit, both did a very good job at separating those two. Now I will also tell you in down in Texas, Seven Eleven is become very, very fancy. Has it? To which they, well, they have pop-up, they basically have pop-up stores in the airport in Dallas where they just have Slurpees. Interesting. I didn't know that. Some, because sometimes you just gotta catch a flight and have a Slurpee. I do. I do appreciate a blue raspberry Slurpee. They are pretty good. I haven't had one in probably decades, but they are good. I finally, I finally had my first Slurpee last year, and it was worth it. What? Uh, what flavor? I think it was cherry. Of course, of course, you went for cherry. You got to go for something a little more wild, or you mix two of them. Like that's fun too. They also had a Mountain Dew one. Okay, that I wouldn't have given you shit for. But how could good it can a Mountain Dew Slurpee be? You know, sometimes simple is good. Now, and that's different from an icy. Yes, it is different from an icy, and I think I actually prefer the Slurpee. It's a little sweeter from what I remember. Again, I haven't had either one since I was a kid. But see, in New York, we had we had ices, and we also now I also did not realize that Mister Softy was a Philadelphia thing. Is it? You didn't have ice cream trucks. Well, we had ice cream trucks, but but we had Mr. Softy and we had the good humor truck. Oh, okay. But we had ice cream trucks. Did you ever go to the ice cream trucks? <laughs> yeah, with, back when they had the firecrackers. Something else that I heard, and this was a few years ago, so I'm not sure how far they got with the plans for this, but I thought they were going to do some kind of drive through for Wawa where you could get a couple basic things. I think things from the convenience end, like... The, the refrigerated sodas and maybe this, you know, snacks or whatever. But I, I never saw that really come to fruition. So I don't know if if plans were scrapped for that. But like I said, this is this is pre-COVID that they were talking about this. So I don't know if it ever happened or not with any of the stores. Well, you know where they do have a, a drive through Sheets. They also have a car wash. All right. Well, that's pushing it. <laughs> does somebody... Now, my question for that, does somebody wash your car or do you have to wash your car yourself? No, I think it's one of like the drive through Oh, the drive throughs Got it. Okay. Those used to freak me out as a kid. My mom would take me through the drive through and just like those big things hitting the windshields and it was dark in there. It just, it's a thing of nightmares. I like would literally, like I could feel my heart racing as we would go through it. Like it was just, it was a nightmare. 
Okay, well, that's another thing we need to ask. We can ask you as the listeners to chime in on. Did you also get freaked out by the car wash? Who's with me here? I mean, those things were, and even still today, I mean, I don't go through them very frequently, but when I do, it's still like, you know, gives me a bit of anxiety. I don't know. So what what are the convenience stores Wawa ask sheets ask in California or on the West Coast? I, I've been out to Seattle and I can't remember. I think they're called AMPM. AMPM. Okay. Please, listeners, tell us if you're on the West Coast what your convenience stores are. Whether you wish you had a Wawa or sheets. Wawa. Either one's fine. You can't tell me that Wawa is not the bigger corporation. I'm not saying it's not the bigger corporation. All I'm saying is that they're both very good in their own way. I respectfully disagree. So I vote Wawa and you vote both. You can't have, you can't tie. This isn't. I'm just, I'm just living in, the, I'm just living in the gray area of our, of our world. Okay. So I did, I wanted to add one more thing for what it's worth. So I have a teenage niece who uh, lives in an area where it's, it sheets is very prevalent and she have, have you also have, have you also initiated her into the Wawa into, into the Wawa cult? She has initiated herself. I will tell you. Every time she's around a Wawa, she has to go. She loves it. She just freaks out about it. She loves it so much. So there's an example of somebody that has sheets available to them 24/7 and she prefers to go to Wawa. So my niece is very smart. Basically, we want to hear from you. And we want to hear what you think about Wawa versus versus Sheets. People do have very strong opinions about it. So tell us people what you do, think. People do have very strong opinions. And it can engender the best and worst of people, as you've heard over this last hour. So tell us what you guys think. Do you prefer Sheets? Do you prefer Wawa? What is the convenience store around you? Or if you're in another country, tell us what your experience is with convenience stores in your country and what they look like. Does it sound like... They're more like Wawa or Sheets or weigh in. Let us know what you think. And apparently, and let me know if you're a weirdo like me that likes them both. And with that, before we, things get really heated and friendships get lost, we will say goodbye for this week. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, follow us on Instagram and on TikTok. Uh, email us at the tell me about podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the tell me about podcast. As always, rate and subscribe to us. That's really important. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.